Okay, in this video I want to talk about how to rationalize the denominator of a fraction. Um, and to rationalize the denominator basically says if there's square roots, we got to get rid of them. Um, so that's all that it means. Or any type of root, not just square roots, cube roots, fourth roots, fifth roots, etc. A couple rules that may be useful. It says if you have the nth root of x raised to the m power, we can write that as x raised to the m over n. It says if you have x to the a times y to the b raised to the c power, that's equivalent to x to the ac times y to the bc. If it's x to the a times x to the b, that's equivalent to x to the a plus b. And then the square root of a times the square root of b is the square root of ab. So I don't know if we'll make use of all these, but just a couple that um, off the top of my head are often useful. Um, so in this case, to get rid of the square root of 2, um, all we really have to do is just multiply the top and bottom of our fraction by square root of 2. And on top, you simply get 5 square root of 2. On the bottom, square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 4. And then we'll simply be left with 5 square root of 2 and the square root of 4 uh, simply being 2. Okay, so the idea, one little trick, notice if you take the square root of something times the square root of something, it all just kind of cancels out, and you're just left with the, the thing under the square root. So we'll make use of that in the next one. It says if you have 4 times the square root of x, we can multiply the bottom by square root of x, the top by square root of x. Well, um, on the top we're left with 4 square root of x. On the bottom, again, square root of x and square root of x is just x. Okay, same thing on the next one here. Um, it says we have the square root of xy. Well, I can multiply again top and bottom by the square root of xy. And if I do that, again on the bottom, the square roots just cancel each other out, and I'm just left with x times y. And on top, I still do have my square root of xy. And again, on these, if, if, if there's a root in the bottom and you rationalize the denominator, you're going to end up with a radical in the top. So I've had people before say, well, we got, you know, they didn't like that. They thought somehow you should get rid of all the radicals altogether. And that's just not possible to do, okay, unless they're nice, perfect squares. So in my next one here at the bottom, let me scroll down a little bit. Oh, get it in there. Okay, it says if you have... 1 over, now we have the cube root of x and the square root of y. So I'm going to rewrite these. Um, I'm going to write this as x to the 1 third times y to the 1 half. And again, I have to multiply my fraction by something, but let's, you know, let's keep in mind our goal as well. Ultimately, I want to get rid of the cube root and I want to get rid of the square root. I want to have just x to the first power and then y to the first power. So I think, what would I have to multiply by to accomplish that? Well, to get rid of the x of, to the one-third, I would have to multiply by x to some power. But what power would it be? Well, remember, if we multiply like bases, we add exponents. So one-third plus what, what power is x to the first power? Well, I think x to the one-third times x to the two-thirds will give us x to the first power. So if we multiplied the bottom by it, we have to multiply the top by it. Again, y to the 1 half, that's the same thing as square root. But we, again, we just multiply top and bottom by y to the 1 half. And now on the bottom, again, x to the 1 third times x to the 2 thirds is x to the first. y to the 1 half times y to the 1 half is y. x to the 2 thirds, if I wanted to, I could write that as the cube root of x squared. And then, again, the square root of y, I can just write um, square root of y, what I think people are used to seeing. All right, so let's do uh, some that are a little more complicated, slightly more complicated. And this is if you have two terms in the denominator, two square roots, what do you do? So maybe I've got 3 over, we'll say, the square root of 7 minus the square root of 5. And what do we do in that case? If you have two radicals and they're separated by a plus or a minus, what you do is you multiply by what's called the conjugate. And if your terms are a minus b, so something minus something, the conjugate of that, what we call the conjugate, will be a plus b. Likewise, if you started with a plus b, the conjugate of that is a minus b. 
So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply top and bottom of the square root by the square root of 7 plus the square root of 5. Do the same thing on the top, square root of 7 plus the square root of 5. And now if I do this, I just have to FOIL things out. Um, I'm not going to multiply anything out on the top. I'm just going to write it, though, as 3 times the square root of 7 plus the square root of 5. Make sure you keep that in parentheses. On the bottom, though, I have to FOIL things out. So I'll get the square root of 7 times the square root of 7, which is just going to give me plain old 7. When I multiply square root of 7 and positive square root of 5, I'll get positive. Again, we can multiply the stuff underneath. I'll get positive 35. But notice on the inside, we'll get negative square root of 35. And this is the whole point of multiplying by the conjugate, is the stuff on the inside just cancels out. Okay, and then I'm left with, I've still got negative um, square root of 5 and positive square root of 5. If I multiply those together, I'll get negative 5. So what are we left with? We've got 3 times the square root of 7 plus the square root of 5 over, well, the positive and the negative root will cancel out. I'm just left with 7 minus 5. 7 minus 5 is just 2. Okay, so kind of a, uh, one little example there also of multiplying by the conjugate. So um, I hope these examples help. If you need to see some more of these, certainly let me know. I'm going to do one other slightly trickier one where what if they're not square roots? What if, for example, one of the items at the very beginning was a cube root? What do we do in that case? So if you're interested in that, stick around. Um, I'll show you how to do it. Certainly getting rid of square roots in the bottom is the most common types of these that you'll see, though. All right, um, good luck.